Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today I'm going to show you how I use my ID or the key binds and features that I cannot live without. We've seen this image all too many times, a programmer sitting at his desk, writing the code and you know, when the file is edited, you need to save it. And he grabs the mouse and he takes it to that corner and he presses on the floppy disk, a complete and utter disaster. The last thing you want to see, the suffering, the crying of puppies. It looks like absolute amateur hour. You programmers, my people, I want you to look professional. You need to know how to shoot bullets at your code through your ID, not sit there clicking at buttons. Oh, I want to click on, the, on that button and on this button. None of that. Even old people with a guitar, you still see them shredding. Why are you not shredding your keyboard? People should come over to your workstation, take a look at your screen and they should see the screens, things flying all over the place. You, nobody should be able to understand what's going on there. Or if everybody understands keybinds, they should be able to understand what's going on. Anyway, if you're enjoying the video, like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. If you have any questions, don't forget to check out the description and I have a C Sharp course that is out. If you want to know C Sharp as I do, I highly recommend you take a look at it. With that, let's go ahead and get started. My IDs of choice are generally IntelliJ ID. However, the features that I'm describing here, you should be able to find them in your IDs. If they're not, well, then tough luck. Your ID is not as good as mine. And if you want to be good with your tool, you don't need to be using an arcane one like Vim or Emacs that makes it look completely magical. Modern IDs have good features as well. So let's take a look at this. We have an ID. It's going to have a bunch of tools before you even write any code. You want to be familiar with the tools that you're using. For example, if you have a project open, you want to be able to take a look at this project. You want to be able to bring up something like, oh, I don't know, the terminal through which you run everything. And if you have a folder, for example, like the W ww root folder perhaps you want to be able to open the terminal in there because this is a c-sharp project maybe i want to install a package so i can just bring up the nugget package manager i will also have other windows like the run window maybe if i want to take a look at the database if i have multiple services running if i have my unit tests or if i want to basically in interact with git so let's close all of that bring that back up and uh, let's say that i have a couple of files open. If I want to navigate between the files, I'm going to be using keybinds. I don't need to be clicking on tabs. And same in the terminal. If I have multiple terminal windows open, the same keybind works. And this is really the first step. Just understand what kind of tools you have. And there is only really about 5% of the features that you're going to be using. The rest, you just kind of want to hide away. And this is a cool thing with a writer that you can actually just say, Look, uh, something like a toolbar window, you can actually just turn it on or off and you can hide these things. So for me, most of the things I've just said, I don't actually know what this is. Why is this in my way? I want more space for code. So I just chose to hide all of those things away. So closing all the files, again, just being able to pop up uh, the windows for whichever tools you're using and then being able to navigate the file structure, I would say is the next thing. So the first thing that you can do is look through the solution window and uh, click on these files individually, or you can say, I know that I'm going to have something like an ass helper in my file. So I will use maybe something like ass to try to find it or ass helper. Maybe I know that there is going to be a program class somewhere in here. So it will open something like this, right? So for example, in table, I'm going to look for a class table, or I can look for a, t a file table. Also, you've seen me try to look for actions. And this is just, again, being able to explore or use the tool to explore the tool or whatever things you have inside the tool. And this is a cool thing with uh, JetBrains is, or, and I think all other IDs really do the same, is if you have some kind of uh, action or command, it will actually display the keybind. So if you ever forget what the keybind is, you can kind of say, uh, well, I am looking for, I don't know, uh, my databases. Oh, okay, it is uh, command seven, all right? So speaking of navigation, once you generally understand the tools that you can surface or the things in your, your project that you can surface, surface you can then say, uh, well, 
I have this thing that is a foreign library. I want to take a look at what's inside and this is where JetBrains really shines for me. I think Visual Studio also has a decompilation now, but decompilation is like the holy grail. I don't know how I ever used to read code or understand programs without it, right? If you want to know what's going on under the hood and you're using VS Code or an ancient editor that doesn't support decompilation, tough luck, you're going to have to open GitHub and well, basically pray it's open source. Now for the code that belongs to you, uh, hopefully everybody is familiar with the context menu. And that is specifically, let's say I remove a using statement and it will say, look, you want to import something. So this is the context menu. And generally people will only say, oh yeah, something's missing and import. One thing that you're missing are all of these options down here. So for example, like navigate to refactor this. So navigate to, uh, this is so useful. I have it on control space. So let's say this add singleton right over here. I can look and basically find all of these. If I ever want to know what IL code is over here or what uh, C sharp code this has been lowered down to or where things are being used. So for example, like if I go to the as helper, and this execution over here, and I want to say, find usages, right, I can see instantly where this is being used. And if it's being used in a 1000 places, it's going to open a different window for me. So uh, hopefully, you can see here the difference in colors for these two files, the blue over here means that I have edited this file and Git now recognizes this. So Rider has a really good Git integration where you can basically do tons and tons of different things. Who did what commit, where revert commit, revert merge, uh, cherry picking, uh, filter by file, user by date, uh, by path in the uh, system tree. Uh, and you then, once you're actually do performing the changes, so let's actually do have some changes. Sometimes uh, most of these windows that you get over here, for example, like the change window, Sometimes what I do is look, I can actually just see all the things that I'm changing and how it used to look before. Sometimes I just have my code window like this and I'm just editing in the diff and any window that you bring up generally has really good support for all of this functionality. So for example, I'm looking for use static files. I can use all of the same keybinds and things just work really great. So this is another thing that JetBrains do really, really well is every single screen of code that you see just enables the whole functionality. And if somebody is using like Emacs, well, in Emacs, everything is a buffer. Yeah, but it doesn't take you like 10 years to learn how to use it if you are using an IntelliJ ID. All right, so relax. We get the idea that we have this ID. It has a bunch of tools. We know how to surface these tools. And then once we're looking at the code, we know that we can traverse in all of these different places. Now, what you actually want to do for editing your code, apart from the general key binds when I, where I want to say jump to the beginning of the line to the end of the line, select from the beginning, select to the end, maybe you want to select a word, Maybe you want to select this word, right? You want to select multiple lines. Some of the most favorite things for me are simple keybinds like duplicate line, right? And then I can just say rename this to something else. Delete line. If I want to navigate to line 42, I can scroll down like this or I can say actually jump to line 22 and it will j basically move the cor cursor up. If I have, if I see that something is down there or I remember something is on some line, I can say actually just go to line 80 and the thing is going to be there. Some other things that I absolutely love is for example, the message here. Uh, let's say I want to select the message and then the next occurrence. This is absolutely amazing. So whatever selection I have, it is just going to select the next thing. So for example, if I highlight the equals, I can select this and then do something like this, right? So generally, if I am editing something in JavaScript, a lot of the times I can actually just take the code from C sharp, copy it across and then say, look, I want to select this, all of these, change them here and maybe put a semicolon on here, all right? And then let's just clean this up. One revolutionary feature for me was, I think it's called either expand selection or smart selection. Uh, let's say I have a cursor right over here. And 
if I want to select contains, I would have to jump back to the beginning of the word and then select the word. Or what I can start doing is expanding selection, which is going to say whatever this thing that I am basically sitting on, just expand it out and expand it out further. So each individual little scope, it basically expands out to it. So and it can go to functions to the whole method right from the body to the lambda. So some interesting things that you can do with this is, for example, if I want to select the whole lambda over here, what I can actually do is say, look, let's go to line 18 to the end. And starting from this arrow, I just want to expand selection. And this is just going to do it. So I can still do the same. But let's say from the if statement over here, grab it from uh, by the brace by this and then slowly reach the whole body. So you once you're using this key bind, you're, you can kind of say, all right, uh, yeah, the lambda, the easiest thing to do here will be just to do something like this, and then I can remove it and replace it with something else. So expand selection, select next occurrence. Another revolutionary feature for me in JetBrains is really if you have an error somewhere over here, you're renaming stuff and stuff's just breaking. Uh, you don't want your solution uh, open because you have 10 other files open. You just want to say, look, jump to next error and then you can see it this is particularly useful when you're working on stuff and you're somewhere over here and you're you know you, you have that urge i want to drag the mouse and this just makes it so easy to just say look um over here let's just jump to the error and fix this thing right so jump to the next error in file jump to the next error in your solution super useful keybind this uh, next code editing trick, uh, not super revolutionary, but uh, this changes how the selection works. So generally, if you hold down shift and you drag down, it's going to be selecting everything as you're uh, basically uh, navigating. However, if you enter column selection mode, you can start moving like this. So it's a <laughs> different experience, so to speak. So it can be very useful. If you accidentally turn it on, you might be slightly confused at what is happening. But the column selection mode, uh, can't think of anything uh, to do with it here, but it can basically come in handy. And one thing I see people give me grief about is the trailing comma. Uh, is the trailing comma good, bad, right? So if you have a trailing comma over here and, uh, you know, you want to move a line and moving lines is something you do all the time. All right. So you select all the lines that you want to move, uh, you move them about. If you have a line over here and you move it, suddenly your code doesn't compile. If you have a trailing comma and you move the line, all good, right? You don't need to go and faff about with things. One reason I started actually expanding my parameters this way is because if I need to switch them around, it's super easy. And again, if you get this context window where you actually, well, uh, you, you want to pay attention to the bottom part here. So control T refactor, you can actually change signature. And this will allow you to say, Oh, actually, I want to reorder my parameters. And then the ID is going to take care of reordering parameters for all of the other occurrences. So if you change something here, it's not going to break something that is going to be consuming this particular method. Uh, ask helper, I've changed it. Uh, I didn't want to change anything. I want to roll it back. And actually, once I've reloaded Git, it has recognized that I have rolled back all the changes. But let's say I did mess this up and I want to go back. Uh, this is how easy it is for me, right? Uh, unless I actually want control Z or something like that. So this file has gone through tons and tons of changes. A revol absolute killer feature for JetBrains IDs, local history, show local history for files uh, sometimes it goes back days uh, two days but you essentially get a i don't know a transaction log a git on the side so if you forget to use git to commit you can still and you mess everything up you can still go back in time because you just have this show history thing i don't think i know any other ids that actually have something like this and closing all the windows, uh, the last thing for me was rediscovering uh, databases or the database integration. I was using PostgreSQL through the command line and uh, uh, I finally decided, well, I think Writer had a database using an interface tool, whatever. So I, it, it was so good, I actually made a keybind for it, right? And now it's my go-to thing whenever I'm connecting to a database. So. Uh, you can do things like backup. So at some point, I, w I just want to test a data migration. So let's say I want to restore. Uh, I don't have 
whatever this pg restore command or psql from a dump so let's just bring up the terminal where is this uh this is located in this position uh let's just quickly restore a database from this thing right here run the whole thing explodes because i haven't selected any of the feature uh, any of the schemas so it's actually importing all of the tables if i actually just want to go ahead and drop the whole thing right so it, it, it's just super you, you could see how, like i'm interacting with it super easy to control your database and again i probably look like an ape here because i've been using uh, MS SQL a long time ago, but since everything moved to the cloud, you kind of don't touch the database that is local to you. So uh, that is pretty much all I have. Uh, first of all, the tools that you have in your ID, you kind of want to know what's available and just be able to reach the tools that you're using daily. Just pause, think, what do I use in my ID every single time? Is it the save button? Have control S. My ID saves everything for me. I still have a reflex to just press Control S. The reflex is so bad that when I'm actually writing something in the browser and it's not an actual editor, I instinctively just press Control S just to try and save it and then I'll get a pop-up, right? So once you're aware of all of the tools that are available to you, you kind of want to be able to reach those tools. And then once you actually have those tools, you want to know how to use them. So you're going to be editing code. You want to be able to navigate the code. You want to be able to change the code. So learning some of the useful actions that I've highlighted here, chances are you're going to be using a different ID to me. So what you will have to do is say, how do I use smart selection in Visual Studio? And hopefully you find the keybind. If not, tough luck. <laughs> you're going to probably have to Google or a cheat sheet. Anyway, without rambling on for too long, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section. If you want the code for all the rest of the videos, because I don't have any actual code for this video, this is actually already part of the patron supporters repository. If you want the access to all of the source code for all of my videos, please come support me on Patreon. A very big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.